This okay. conference will now be recorded. We're ready to go. All right, we're ready to go. Um, thanks for coming out on this hot, hot day, but it's not windy, so it's a good day, right? Um, we have show and tell, I guess, today. We've got everyone's favorite tools here that just kind of are amazing. You could spend a lot of money buying all these things. I don't have most of them but uh, I may be getting a few of them. And uh, it, it is still possible to plant some seeds. So we didn't have a seed um, pickup sheet out, but if you want to have some seeds, we can certainly hand some out. Some of them that I looked at that are in the cupboard that we still have plenty of that you could still plant and have a, a fall crop, beets, radishes, cilantro, chives, green beans, golden wax beans, those can all still be planted. If you plant them in the seed, you'd have to make sure that you're watering maybe a couple times a day, but they should come up and, and you should have a harvest before fall. So if you want any of those seeds, let us know and we can get them for you. Otherwise, I'm going to hand it out. You're going first, Karen? I am going first. Okay, so Karen's going to wow you with all of her tools, and I may have to slip this one in my pocket before I leave. <laughs> I've ordered 36 of those. I have that many people that have asked for this tool. I have had mine. I probably had it when I got married. We first got married. We looked married 50 years next year. And my first one after um, 12, 15 years, I lost it. I loved it everywhere could not find it and so finally I, I searched everywhere for this particular one I could not find it I found one similar to it but it had a, a, a handle that broke right away and then pretty soon this thing broke off and then I found this company um, uh, they are in the United States but they're stainless steel products are made in China this one here I've had over probably uh, at least 20 some years and I paint them pink, uh, fluorescent pink. So if it gets shoved with the weeds over the top of it, I can do it. <laughs> so all my tools, I, I, my husband, I spray paint his are orange, so he doesn't use my tools to say <laughs> <laughs> mine are all pink. So, but it's really, I cannot tell you how many times that I've gone through a weed pile thinking, oh, where is it at? And it, it's just easy to see. But this one here, I use, you know, not only for just, you know, pulling, you know, around plants. I use it to in the springtime to uh, grows. Um, it's great for getting weeds out. You can get down in there and just pull them right out. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tool. Um, mine needs to be sharpened a little bit, but I haven't sharpened this probably for five, six years. It really, really hold their, the sharpness. Um, but they are an awesome, awesome tool. These I just brought along, and I, I know they always want to mention this too, you know, on just some of the different different uh, hand tools. The thing I want to say about those is make sure you get a heavy stainless steel. Um, I cannot tell you how many tools that I've got like this, you know, you get into the ground and start, you know, trying to pull up and the thing either bends or breaks or whatever. So make sure you get a nice, heavy, sturdy one. This one, these here I've had also for years and years. And then um, going to uh, the, I, I love Fisker. They're one of my favorites. And so a lot of my tools are Fisker. And the reason being is they have a 100% warranty on a lifetime. And I've had something that I had for like 10 years and I called them and said, you know, something broke on it. And they said, oh, we'll send you a new one. <laughs> so it, it's nice to know that you can get something that's money back here, or, you know, that they'll, they'll guarantee it. Um, and uh, so like just the hand tools are, are really, really wonderful. This one I picked up at a show in Sioux Falls. Um, it was at one of the garden shows up there. And I haven't been able to find it anywhere to purchase it uh, because my husband once in a while uses it and I just tell him to put it back in my wrap <laughs> of tools so, so I know where it's at. And, and one of the things is it's got uh, some gears in it. In here, you know, it's kind of like your your other ones. I know you've got the bigger ones, you know. But the nice thing is, if you know you're you're out weeding and you got a little tree or something there that you can't get out, so I brought some sticks along, you know, like on, on just a regular one, you you can't get through those. I mean, I mean, you can turn it and turn it, and you just can't get through. 
versus on something like this, you know, because it's got you can do it three times. Does it also have a wire cutter on it? Have what? A wire cutter? Some of those like that will have a wire nipper. Oh, you know. Oh, really? Well, I haven't seen those. No, like I said, I just saw this several years ago. I bought it at, at one of the garden shows up there, and I do use them a lot oh, just yeah. for that fact because. The yeah, rats really, yeah, yeah, it just yeah. snaps off. <laughs> These here, you know, you'll never get them, get them to snap like that. So I do like that about that. And then um, one of my other uh, tools, and then you will mention this one too. This is also made by Fisker, and it's great for dandelions or weeds. You know, you you uh, you know put this um, you put this over the the weed. You know the 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 center of the weed and then you step down and it pushes it into the ground and as it pushes it into the ground this thing closes up and so then you step on this and just back it up the other model that i have of it although i was just telling Shannon, uh, my husband just broke it uh, because the problem is so hard but again it has money back guarantee but it has a a uh, uh, switch on the end of it and so when you get that weed out, you just click that switch and it'll shoot it about five feet. <laughs> so he just takes the wheel pick up and my grandkids just love it. There's just like, you know, they fight with them even you know, just shooting stuff at them. But it really shoots it far. It's really wonderful, wonderful um, for dandelions or weeds and stuff like that instead of getting down to the ground or using your hand things, you know, bending down. This one you could just stand stand up. I gave my mother-in-law, who is 92, uh, about five years ago, we gave her one of these for Mother's Day, and to this day they use it. Do you find this stuff all online, or do local? This um, was yeah. at the time at Mon Menards. When my neighbors, my brothers and sisters, everybody saw this, everybody went there. My brother went all the way to Norfolk to get one. My other brother went to Sioux City to get one because they were all out. Um, I don't know if they still have them, but um, you know, you can look up Fisker tools, and I'm sure you know, somebody carries them. Um, uh, but they're a wonderful, wonderful tool. The other one from them that I use a lot is this. And this is, you know, if I've got a branch, you know, that's uh, hanging over that I want to, you know, get up and pull, you know, you just do this. Or you could do, if you got a shorter one, you can just do it by hand also. But you just go up and just pull it. And it really, really cuts well. You know? uh, do this. I have to try this. Here, oh, okay. She's gonna hit her face in the tree. Gotta hold it up the right hand. <laughs> <laughs> but again, just uh, <laughs> 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 it's a lot easier because you can pull it straight down. I'm afraid it would hit you. But it, yeah, it really works well for for clipping off branches. And it does branches probably. I do branches, you know, probably. About like that, you know, but it's wonderful for branches that are hanging over. And then my other great tool is this. And I've had this probably again for 20 plus years. I I am use it all the time. They do have uh, an attachment to it. It's, it's something it's like a cushion that goes over the top. I don't bother with that, but it's wonderful, like when I'm picking beans or weeds or whatever, and it has an adjustable, so you can adjust it. You know, to about this high, or you know, this low. This is the size that I like. And um, what you do is just sit on it. But if you're picking beans, you know, you can roll this way, you can roll this way. And then when you want to slide, you just slide over, so you're not sitting on the ground. But you know, and it adjusts to different heights. But it is uh, again one that I use all the time. A lot of times I put my clippers in here, and I have my little hole in here if I'm, if I'm weeding. You know. And I just, you know, throw it in here. And then um, lastly, this is my newest tool. Uh, Elle was telling me about this. And I was like, okay, so, because we we're talking about pole saws. And we've got one uh, for sawing branches down, you know, on trees that has the chainsaw on the end of it. I won't use it. <laughs> They're just too scary for me. And not only that, you know, when that branch comes down, because <laughs> it's so heavy, you have a hard time holding that, uh, you know, saw so it doesn't come crashing down with it. This one here is made of aluminum and it, it just 30 feet. So I can go all the way beyond that wall back there. And what you do is you just click these, you know, and just pull it out to different, you know, all the way to different lakes. And each one of these has a, I'm not kind of hard, 
And anyhow, then on the end of it, you put this. Yeah. <laughs> it just screws on. And is there enough? Downward. There is. As a matter of fact, my husband was using it all morning and he said, I'm using that this morning because he, he has some uh, branches that would come over the top of our fruit trees. And he said, I want to get those out of there, you know. And he was up there, you know, and you just extend it, you know, and, you know, and just when you've got a branch that you can, you know, it, it holds it up. And then you just saw it, and it is so sharp, but it's amazing. I mean, I had literally a whole pile of branches that I took out down around my garden. And he loves it also. And I'll just mention they do have other tools. My son gave me this from Mother State. Um, and the other tools that they have is um, they have, you know, not that it's to do with gardening, but you can do an attachment again, you know, for doing windows. And we've got really high windows in the back. It really works well for that. It's got different lengths of, of blades that go with it. And the other thing that my husband was also using this morning was this. Because one of the branches that came down got caught in another branch, so it didn't come all the way down. So he put this on there just to shove the branch in. Mind you, it's 30 feet in the air. So the only thing that it doesn't work on for cutting branches if you've got a really long branch hanging over, trying to cut the end of that branch because the whole branch moves, you know. But if you get up, you know, against the tree, you would be amazed on how easy it is just to take, you know, and, you know, some of them they didn't cut. Usually, uh, I don't go any bigger than that, but usually when you get up that high, they aren't a lot bigger than that, you know, so you can just go in there and, and the smaller ones, you know, like that, you know, about three swipes and it's down with this down. So what company is that one? This is Doka. Um, and I did bring them. And there, this one runs about a hundred bucks. I think that was with shipping because my uh, son ordered it for me. So that one is Doka. And like I said, they've got a ton of a cap. Uh, they bring it, I think, but anyhow, they do have a, oh, a bunch of different. Oh, and then they have this one also. This one you can use in the house. So if you have ceiling fans or woodwork up there that needs to be dusted, they want you to spell Doka. What's that? They want you to spell Doka. Oh, D O C A. Let me look at it just. Yeah, it was DOCA. She don't have all the attachments, but we can grab that one. No, I don't have that one. So, um, but anyhow, that is that is a, a brand new. It's right here. It's Doka Pole. If you go online, it's dokapole.com. D O C A and then toll.com is on that. And they've got about 20 different attachments. Um, these are just ones that I kind of made that I wanted. So, but anyhow, that is my tool. I think I have all of mine. So we will okay. turn it over to Layout. And well, I'm going to just go over a couple of the things that I have that she has. And um, I have uh, Grandpa's weeder, which is like this. Um, where's your weeder at? Here, right there. Um, so this is similar. You um, you just you know you stick it in the ground, and um, you step on it and pull it up. So well, if you step on it, well, you know, push it down further, and then um, when you do the prying, it just pulls it up. Great for dandelions. So, but it doesn't shoot it across the. Well, I wish I had that. Oh, it shoots this week in the That might be a dangerous thing to do. Um, and then uh, a couple other things that she mentioned as far as shawls. I've got a couple different kinds. And you, all, everybody kind of gets used to what's best for them. I like this one. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, whereas this one's straight, so I don't get as tired using this one yeah. and the one, then um, the one on your, i'm sorry it's the one on your right that you sent on the curve does it have serrated? Yeah, yeah no it does not have a serrated blade this one no um you know has a depth it has the depth to it so you know about how deep you're going with stuff so that's you know that's one of the nice things with this 
Um, as far as deck goes, about the only thing I really worry about is what I'm using my drill and drilling in for bulbs. Uh, yeah. Then I know how, how deep I have to go. Um, the other thing that uh, I have that's similar to what she has, these are my favorite tools. Um, they're, I, I believe these are both Coronas and well, they're the same, but they're, they're spendy, but the metal in them is good. And um, like I said, Karen, my, I, I got some chips along here because I was doing more, but if you run your finger on here, you'll cut your skin. So, um, but I really like these, they just go, Handy, and when I'm in my cart here, I'll show you in a minute. And then when I'm like this time of year, you got a lot of tomato runners that either a tomato instead of branching up that you don't need. And this little tool works really well for that. It's so sharp. And again, um, this is a Corona, I believe. I don't know if you can see it on there, but most of my stuff is Corona. I just like the brand. Um, but it's very, yeah, there it is right there, Corona. Yeah. Um, but it's very, very sharp. And they're also really good if you do flowers or anything like that. Right. Yeah, and it's all like, just um, when stuff. I grow my stuff at home, yeah, uh, in the trays, if I want to cut some stuff off, if you know, if you grow, have two or three uh, seedlings, come up and you want to get rid of stuff, that works well for that. And this one also, this is more like a razor blade. And so those are both Corona things. I don't use this one as much just because I'm afraid if they take it out and it's going to get lost, like you said. But one thing with the Coronas, they do have the red and white, so you can't find them. Now, I do not know how long I've had this one, but after I got my Coronas, I, I didn't even take it out with me. I just leave it in the house. <laughs> so, um, and I was telling her, one of my favorite tools, and my daughter um, also, the Hori Hori knife. I mean, it is just, um, like Karen said, she knows somebody that digs out roots even with it, and I do that too. Um, it's it's uh, this one is serrated on one side, sharp on the other side, and um, it's just it's expensive, but it's you, it's almost impossible to damage the thing. Um, good for digging roots. If you want to do your your um, rows, you know, if you're going to put a little tr tr a row or whatever. One thing nice, it does have the depth pump. So if you're planting or something, you can just go oh, three inches. Okay, that's about you know, and it just I like it because of the weight. It's got enough weight, but it's not too heavy. And it's so strong. It's really, really good for dividing plants. Like you got houses, yeah. like big houses, or something that really slices it. Yeah, love it. yeah, that it's just excellent. Um, this cobra is one that I like. Like if you have um, an edge that you want to maintain, either next to the gravel or next to a uh, cement paddock, whatever. Um, this is really good for running right along that edge. It's sharp on both sides and you just kind of pull it through. And that's that's called a cobra. And um, I'll get back to this in just a minute. Um, I know <laughs> Karen kind of laughed at me. I said, I have this shovel in my garden. Well, you know why I have that shovel? Oh, come on. Thank you. Little Bill is out there digging dirt with grandma. And um, the other thing that's really good for hoeing um, not hoeing, but for weeds. If you have, um, most of us now are mulching everything we do uh, just to cut down on the weeds and to save on moisture. And with, if you have a uh, bark or straw, it doesn't work if you have like the red mulch like I have in my tomatoes, but this is so neat because it will slide. You put it down underneath the mulch where the weeds are and you just pull it through. And it really is another thing with a pretty sharp blade. But this really works well. And let's see, do I have it? This just says it's a, a right hand cake pie, is what they call it. And I got a short handle so I can sit on my cart and, and do it that way. Um, the other thing that if, if these little things can't get it, um, I don't have a powerful thing like Karen does, but I do have this Corona nipper and I use this, you know, when I go to thin out my bushes or um, anything, if a tree falls down, you can, you know, limit. It has extension handles, so you get more, more grip if you pull it out further. We used to just get a pipe wrench on the end of it, but um, I'm getting more sophisticated, I guess, in a whole age. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is the one extra lopper that way. And then, um, <laughs> Well, this one is just too heavy, and you can see it's rusty. I I haven't hardly used this one. Um, if I have, if I'm sitting in my cart going around, 
Uh, this works really well. It's a very sturdy tool and um, the weight is about right. This is too heavy for me. This bigger one is too heavy to, to work for hours, you know. Whereas this one, I can just sit and go along my and, and just chop and, you know, all kinds of good stuff with this one. The other thing um, that I use a lot in my raised beds is this little shovel. Because, um, you know, if, if, I, if I'm not sitting on a chair, I can just go over to my raised beds and, and um, it works quite well. For, for a little shovel. And do I have it? Yeah, it's just called, this is a DeWitt uh, for a nail spade, is what it's called. And I'll pass the sheet around. Um, the other thing I use quite a bit is my, just a little hole. Theo uses this too to rake rocks. <laughs> but um, I like it because it's small enough and uh, if I'm either sitting on my cart or doing my raised beds, um, I have four foot wide beds and it easily, you know, reaches across that. And so this was a little more expensive than, you know, a lot of your kids toys are. Now, um, how many of you are doing no-till gardening? Anybody doing no-till or want to do no-till? Um, I was just up in North Dakota and my niece, she said, I'm so excited. She said, I'm going to get a broad board. I said, oh, I said, you'll love it. You know, a lot of times the first year you do have to till. And when you till, you're going to dig up all the old seed that's there and replant it. So the first year, it's probably a good idea if you need to fertilize and till it. Or if you need to till it, just till it like a couple inches, just enough to get some of that fertilizer in. But last year, I had an area probably from here to the wall and over to the uh, AV cart there. Um, and it was nothing but old grass and weeds. And I wanted to plant a bunch of squash. So what I did, I, I got out my broad fork and it's the first time I had used it. So if you've not seen it, this, it gets heavy. It's pretty heavy, this particular one is. And they're fairly spinny. But um, to me, if you want to do no-till, this is just the perfect way to go. So what you do, is um, you just start up in the corner and you're gonna just stick it in the dirt and I just jump up on it. Well, not really, I used to jump up on it. But anyway, <laughs> I got both my knees done and so I, I'm more careful and I don't wanna hurt the carpet here. But basically, you know, you always wanna have good shoes on. You don't wear tennis shoes that are really holy or anything like that. You wanna have a good work boot on when you're using this tool. Um, and I don't know, I, I'll either have my cowboy boots or I'll have my um, lace-ups. And anyway, you, so you just step on it and push down and then you just kind of pull back and it's amazing. It goes, you know, you can start off shallower and work your way up till you get the whole width of the thing. And um, once you get that done, I worked up the whole area that way and I went about, probably, I don't know, six, eight inches apart between my, depending on how loose the soil was. And then, after I got that done, if you're going to transplant plants, what you can do is take this little tool, and um, it's all worked up. So then all you're going to do is, what I like about this, it's not that place that you can push it down. I'm not strong enough. I used to be, but I'm not strong enough anymore to push it down like I want. So I can just put my weight on there and it'll in turn and you have enough soil right in that area and then I just plant my seeds right in that area. Worked really well and a really good uh, squash crop last year. It did hardly any work and I must have got it in at the right time because I had hardly any weeds and that was a brand new spot. Well, you know, so um, pretty good. Now the other thing um, as far as I'm sure we all have our faithful hoe for, or I mean, our faithful rake for digging potatoes and um, or broad fork, but it's not broad fork, just a little pitchfork. And then I have different shovels. Um, this is just a, a flat face shovel. I use this mostly for, like, if I go and get compost or something, I like it for that. And then 
Um, I love this little shovel. It's so light and you can work, like I said, a long time. If you're going to do a lot of digging, a lot of transplants, whatever, this works well for that. Now, the other thing I have, I have a couple varieties of hope. When we were kids, this is the kind of hoe we always used. Mm Hold -hmm. a lot of potatoes and a lot of trees with a hoe like this. It's still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Mine from 20, 30, 40 Yeah, and you just, I don't mind it sharpened again. Um, have any of you seen one of these stir yeah. hoes? This is your favorite, yes. And my favorite is not having to weed at all. <laughs> don't mind it but sometimes you know some of them get pretty big on you um but anyway this one is nice because you can go back and forth with it so at the back and forward both forward motion which is nice and then i got this one and i haven't used it as much as i probably should have but um it too will cut both directions but like i said no weeding is the best weeding so that's that's the best for me um and then uh, I had my niece done about two years ago now, and I got this so because I, I I couldn't stay out of the garden, and so I got this little thing, and I, I love the thing. It's um it's nice, it's light, and um basically you know you can um you can you can go down the rows like this if you're you know if you're in a big garden. When I do my lilacs and stuff like that, um trimming and that kind of thing. What I'll do is I'll just put the handle down and then I'll go sideways, carry my tools here, under here, and then I just go along and work. And it was really well, you know. And it's good, it was good therapy when I first did my when I first had my knees done. And we just now in the spring I just pull my um blow the blow the tires up and and off we go. Okay, now um, I'm going to pass this sheet around just so you can kind of see. There's some prices on here. There's some that don't have prices. Um, these are both the same, except these are stapled and these aren't. That's all the differences. <laughs> now um, we talked. Then we're going to talk a little bit about weeding. I mean, watering, not weeding. <laughs> um, one of the things, just a, an aside. I get this plastic stuff from Gurney's and I throw it underneath my tomatoes and it's like a four foot wide by 100 feet and so I can use this for two and a half years and use a new piece. They say you don't have to use new but I tear it up all the time so I just put a new piece down it's not that much. And then with the, so I don't have to dig my potatoes and dig holes in them, I use grow bags. Um, this year I have a whole line of grow bags for my potatoes. And for all my garden stuff, um, except the one part of the strawberries, and I forgot about it when I went, to, I was gone 10 days, and I put back it, I didn't even look up my strawberries. But that's okay, they were gone anyway, pretty much. Um, do any of you have a drip system like this orbit one? I'm a drip system, but it's not like that. Okay. Um, I absolutely, I, I don't care, I should have brought my old one. Um, my old one is, I'm, I, have, I have a well, and the water is so terribly rusty. And so this year, um, I went and got some screens, and when I hook it up to the hydrant, or if you have a, you know, on the side of the house, um, you can, it's just one little screw thing here, you hook onto that, and then there's three different areas that come off of here, and it's just like a hose. In fact, if you want to hook a hose to this, you can. Um, otherwise, you can hook up this uh, distribution tubing, and it's, I don't know, have any of you ever fixed or repaired a hose? Basically, what you do, where's my end at here? Um, I am. Um, Oh, here it is, right here. No, I got it right here. I just got to find the right spot. So, um, because I don't really want to undo the whole thing. <laughs> okay, um, but this is something called distribution tubing, and you use it like a hose, except um, you can go ahead and put your end on it, 
And then you just use your hose clamps. I just bought some hose both clamps just to make them all stronger. And um, then it just screws right into the bottom of this. Okay. Three different sections that, that are on this. And it's similar to the Raybirds. Um, I used, I got this at Menards, and it was cheaper than the Rainbirds. And like I said, the one I have at home is so rusty, you can't even see the thing because my rusty water. I didn't want to take a chance that it's going to be gone for 10 days, and I didn't want to take a chance that it didn't work. So um, I didn't put that one up, but next year I plan to use it for somewhere and just see if I can still use the rusty old thing because it was still working. Um, but basically, just read the directions and set it up. Uh, it helps if you have a daughter that's done it before. And she helped me the first time. And this year she came out because I was going to run some extra. And um, she, I had part of it set up and she said, Mommy, put this together on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I like it because you can go three different areas. Um, I have an area that goes to my raspberries, asparagus, rhubarb, and strawberries. And then I have an area that goes to my potatoes and straw bales. And I have an area that goes to my um, tomatoes and my eggplant and my peppers and I can't remember what else. And then this year, stuff would be gone and we had a neighbor come to do chores. We, um, I set it up so that I have my roses and my um, cone flowers and a bunch of stuff like that hooked up so they have three different areas. So like um, if you have new plants, like I have some new nasturtiums I didn't want to die. I put them on a daily basis to water. Um, and you can say whether you want half an hour, 10 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour and a half, however long. You just set the timer and let it go. You know, I didn't worry about my watering at all. As long as I told everybody that came in the yard, leave the hydrants open. <laughs> 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 and to set this up, like I said, we got to start by putting the, um, little hose on to make it a, a like a regular hose <clears throat> and then there's different tubings that you do to put confidence and <clears throat> I can send these around um, to start with what you need to do is there's three different sizes of these little couplers and um, the black one is like for one gallon a minute the red one is for two gallons a minute and I think the blue one's like a half a gallon a minute and so that you put directly into here and you have this little tool I was pretty, my daughter came out and she said, oh, I really like that book. Where would you get I said, I said, well, I worked with it online. Well, now this year, Menards has it. <laughs> but there's all kinds of little tools that come to fix, to put this stuff on. And you just um, put them, put these little things into the tubing. And then you have to hook up the next set of tubing that will go to your plants. And you can either do, like, on one area, I have probably, He's 30 feet of this running, then I put a plug in the end of it, and then um, just went around for each potato sack, <laughs> and I put the, the little black one, which is a gallon a minute um, emitter, and you can just pass those around just to see what they look like. And <clears throat> so each one of those, you'll put in depending on how much water you want to do. Or um, the other thing that I like to do in my black tubing is um, like I knew the squash was going to take or the pumpkin was going to take more watering than the potatoes just because of the um, they, that was in the ground the potatoes are in grow bags and usually grow beds take a lot more but anyway um, I put one of these in and I put these for each row of stuff that I run off of this and it, you can just shut that if you don't want it to be um, watered that day you can just shut this off. Works so slick. And then, um, or like on one of mine, I just put it on partway so it didn't have as much pressure. So I really like that. Then um, you run this out to your tube, out your hook this up to your emitter, and run this to your plant. And then when you get out there to your plant, um, they have these little tubes like this. This is a, this little black extra thing here. Is for bugs. So you, you put this through here, you flip the thing over so it doesn't pop out, and then this prevents 
the bugs from coming up the line and bugging the line because you know bugs oh. bug everything. I have, do, do you guys have bugs a lot this year? Yes. yes. I come back after 10 days and I'm like, I'm very upset with bugs, but I don't spray it. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so this is a thing you stick in the ground to hold that tubing. And then um, you can spread things out along that tubing. Now, if I would choose that I didn't want to do an emitter, Another thing that works very well, and these are set up so they can um, come out every, um, this particular one is every six inches, and so along my straw bales, I'll run this every six inches. One of the things that I found very handy <clears throat> is for the heavy tubing, I have this heavier, um, this is what you use for your ground cover and stuff, and this is a heavier one, and I'll use that on a heavier tubing. But then on my lighter tubing, I just use the four inches. And they both go into the ground or into my straw bales or whatever I'm doing um, that with. And these, like I said, there's emissions every six inches, or you can get 12 inches or 15, I can't remember which it is. But um, anyway, that way, depending on how many plants you have and how much water you're giving them, this tubing would come off of here. And instead of using an emitter, which I messed up the first time I did it this year, <clears throat> I put this onto an emitter and I'm like, something is not right. Well, then it looks off, yeah. Duh. So, anyway, um, the emitters are these little things like this, and I'll, I'll send both these around. There's just different configurations of these that you could use. And then, at the <clears throat> what you have to do at the end, of this tubing, just like you have to plug the end of this, you have little deals to plug the end of a tubing. And um, I don't know, I just, I really like the way the system works. this one. <clears throat> and I have found there's plastic and metal that goes on the end of this. I prefer the metal. It goes in easier and it seems to last really well. So I'll just pass these around just so you can kind of see what they look like. Um, for the emitters. Oh, and my daughter hadn't, she hadn't seen this and she said, mother, where'd you get that tool? <laughs> but she, um, but this is really a neat tool because you can get cut the big tubing and the little tubing. And so you just have one little thing. You don't have to have, you know, I use all kinds of different things for cutting, but this works so well if you want to go for the system. And I didn't buy everything the first year, I can tell you that. <laughs> but as, as time's gone on, and like I said, this is a really neat thing they got, they have it at the Arts. And in my holes this year, I put this right to the hydrant. And I have to go back now because my well water, I'll have to go back and clear that out to make sure the rest of my system stays up and running. But, um, and then, like, you can see I messed up, so I have tubing on here, so I have to get that cut off. But this is nice because it has the black tubing. It has the, you know, you can get this and other stuff. One of the things that I did on one of my hydrants is I hooked this up. But before I did that, I just used one of these so that if I want to spray or, you know, use the whole separate, I have, I have this. And so I've got all kinds of shut ups along my system. Um, the other thing, a tool that I use, um, are flexible ties, I don't know if you guys use these or not, but like for, I set up my tomato cages and then I use these. Um, I didn't bring it, but have you heard of using that railroad, I call it railroad rebar, but it's not rebar, but it's a, um, when you pour cement or pour, pour concrete, there's a wire stuff yeah. um, that you can get yeah, and it's about better. six foot yeah. tall. They make the best uh, tomato cages. I, I have raised beds and I can't get to the top of them, but um, I love them because you can put them however big or small. You know, if you have an eggplant, you don't need this big one, but if you got, you know, my black crims need big ones. And so um, it really is nice because it's pliable. And um, if you need it to at the end of the season, you could lay it flat. I have a old hay wagon, I lay them up on it. But um, it really, uh, for tomato cages, they're so expensive, and depending on how big you cut them, that works so well. Um, 
it's rusty, so you know, really, if you're a lot of into aesthetics, but once your tomato plants grow, you don't see it anyway. So um, I just love those, and like I said, it's six foot tall, and so you just cut and it works out really, really well. I was going to mention I also use those, um, and I actually went and got a bunch more at Menards. They also make them in a, a uh, four and a half, I think it's a four and a half by eight. Um, you can also get oh, those, okay. and then just put them in a circle, and then I do uh, zip ties. I do too. And yeah. them and just set them over, and they are phenomenal. So I usually start with just the regular, you know, tomato cage, but you know they don't last they don't long because they'll all go over. Well, you got this big support on the outside of it and it works really well. And the squares are big enough you can get your hands in there to yeah. pick the tomatoes and they're yeah. absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, I didn't even use zips on some, on, on some of the stuff I use zips, but on some of it, I just used the wire, cut the wire and um, then just bent it over. Oh yeah, I've done that too. Yeah. You poke yeah. yourself more, but yeah. Yeah. that's why whenever you have yeah. got your gloves on. <laughs> 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 Otherwise I'd be bleeding everywhere. And, um, but yeah, that works really well. Um, is there something else that you guys want as far as uh, questions asked? I have to tell you about my shovel though. Oh, oh yes. yes. So mm -hmm. I had this in my trunk and it, it's a heavy shovel and it's got this little pointy end to it. And my yard, I've got lots of trees and this will cut through the roots. Wow. And it's got a nice big wedge oh, here on the top and a small end, and they're expensive, but boy, this is the only shovel I use for everything anymore. You know, you get it stuck? Huh? Even if you get stuck? It doesn't get stuck. But do you get stuck? No. Don't go anywhere fast. Yeah. It's called sheer head spade. Anyway, this is a great investment if you have to dig through hard soil or roots or not a great environment. I love the top edge. That's yes, yes, yes. yes. That's what I, yeah. yeah, that, that is that's really and, see, that's and the other thing this that's one nice is head. it's not so yeah. tall. Yeah. 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 Sometimes short yeah. people have problems that's with why, yeah. yeah, that's why I like this one too. Yeah, it's nice, nice, nice edge. Yeah, yeah, well that's great. Um, one of the things that I, I didn't know if we have time or not, um, this is actually some of the attachments that you can do with the drip system. And there's and there's different different kinds, different things here. This one you just poke in. In fact, both of these I think are the same. But um, there's a picture on here and it just shows you the different types of things. I had to get this, was it two years ago? They didn't, they ran out of this black stuff and the only way I could get this was to buy a kit. So I went and bought the kit because I needed it so bad. But anyway, um, this one is just uh, 360 degree adjustable. So that would go you know, around. And um, this is a micro spray that would go around. And then the uh, um, umbrella bubbler. I, I don't really know um, what that one exactly does. And then here's another mister. So depending on what you want, um, what kind of plant, you know, you're setting it up or whatever. And then there's pictures right on this bag that shows how to extend your faucet and that kind of stuff, which I didn't use most of the stuff, but I did use the black tubing on it. So this year I bought an extra piece of black tubing, so I have it. I'm glad I did. But anyway, questions? Yeah, it's such a lifesaver. Let me tell you. I, like I said, I've gone for 10 days and I did not have to worry that something wasn't getting water, which, like I said, I forgot my strawberries, but um, I really appreciate it because, and even when it's so hot like this, you don't just, you just don't feel it going up here working. And you don't, I set it so that it comes on like um, five in the morning, and then it's, you know, the hour or 45 minutes, whatever I've set it for, it's done before the sunset, or before the sun comes up too hot. And the plants are getting their drinks, you know. I have a question. Do you what do you do in the in the winter time then? Do you pull all that up? Um I take I take this off, I hook the hose from the hydrant, and then um it uh, just automatically most of it drains. I have so doesn't have a reason. Yeah. Once in a while I have to replace a couple of these. But my water that was my water. That was before I put my filters on. But no, you, um, it's amazing 
Uh, you can do under, you know, like part of my, a lot of my black tubing is actually underground um, because then I've just uh, taken this tubing from it and put it over to raspberry plants or gooseberries or whatever, you know, out there. So really, um, other than, you know, I, I try to, my hoses like this come up about, I have a T-post in there and they come up about, about this high up. So when I unscrew it, you know, unscrew the top and uh, in the fall, take this off, then I unscrew all these. No, I unscrew these first. Unscrew these first and they, because they're up on that T post that tall, they drain. Pretty much the whole system drains out. So it, it works well. Um, my straw bales, my old ones seem to be doing better than, oh no, the new ones are doing better. Sure. Sure. I grow straw bales, grow, grow stuff in straw bales too. Oh, really? Yeah. But the, you got to condition them, but I found, do you guys, anybody do straw bale stuff? Once. Once. I didn't it. like it. Okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, the initial 11 days are hard because you got to condition your bale. But I've been watching different stuff online, and one of the things that, um, you know, the the book on straw bale gardening, he just talks about um, using a high nitrogen the first few, you know, up to day nine or something like that, and then use like a 10, 10, 10 or 20, 20, 20, whatever. Well, um, I watched a guy that it's not the guy that wrote the book, but another guy. And he was talking about using fish emulsion and blood meal. And I used blood meal this year for the first two days. And then I switched over because it was expensive. And my bales just, they uh, processed really quickly. And they were as soft as my old bales within nine days. So, but part of that's going to depend on your weather. You know, uh, when you're so cold, that it took a while for the bales to process good too. But you have to make sure that your bales are uh, warm and that they're starting to break down. Um, one of the good sides you have is like, I had mushrooms just thick on them. And they say that's a good sign, you know? So, um, but the, the potatoes that are in my raised beds and in my grow bags did better. But I planted some, um, this year I tried some sweet potatoes in some of the uh, straw bales, and I'm just curious to see how they do. My nasturtiums are doing fine in the straw bales. I have some strawberries and some, um, not strawberries, some um, tomatoes and peppers and sage and um, basil. That's doing pretty good in my straw bales this year. But the raised beds are still, the raised beds are dirt in the ground, they're the best. I, it just has more nutrition. I did the sweet potatoes and, and uh, grow bags this year. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they work really, really well because they don't want to have the room for them. To yep. Them. And yep. if the deer ever get even close to them, they don't like out. So oh, yeah. It really well for sweet potatoes and grow bags. No, I have a bunch of regular potatoes and I did my a bunch of sweet potatoes, some in the straw bales and some in my uh, raised beds. Mm -hmm. So I'll just see, you know. I don't know what I'll be doing next year though, because I only have the two great big raised beds and I just dropped the tomatoes in. And I want to go one more year with my tomatoes, so I'll probably put them over with my garlic or something. I don't know what to do next year. <laughs> so the grow bags, are they actually hanging somewhere? No, are mine are sitting. You can't hang them. Okay. Yeah, my son gave them to me and I thought, oh, what am I going to do with these? You know? Yeah. No, <laughs> and I, oh, I'll do my sweet potatoes. And just out of curiosity, I did some black some gray and some green this year. But, you know, I was telling the folks uh, the other day when we did our classes a couple months ago, um, with the grow bags, what I really like if they're, and I don't know, most of them all are all made in China, but um, what I like is, you know, you just, I like with potatoes, you put a little dirt in, throw your potatoes in, and then as the potatoes grow, you just throw some more dirt on them as they grow up. Well, my potatoes now, <laughs> now they're really tall, and I'm hoping that it's going to be doing okay. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try and add some fish emulsion or something, um, just to make sure they have. But what I like them at the end of the year, I don't even need my fork. Right. I just take them to the wheelbarrow, and dump them out. And if I want, wash my bag in the washing machine. I'm done. You know, I mean, it's just that easy. It's just so easy. I, I, I really like it. 
from Phoenix. Have you used them before too? You know, I have before this year. This year oh, well, them. I just, has anybody else used grow bags other years? I did a shoe bag one year. Oh, yeah. Okay. I saw it in Martha Stewart kind of thing and wow. food hanging and yes. it was okay, but you had to water a lot. You yeah, do. So yeah. At the bottom got a lot of water because it all drips. All takes. So yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but it was it was fun to see what would come in it. I did lettuce and you know easy light early crops. Good. So it was fun. I, I really. Yeah, I think it. herbs would be a good thing to do. Yeah. 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 A lot of strawberries yeah. in them. Yeah. 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 I haven't. I didn't do strawberries, but um, it's just kind of fun. You, you know. I think for kids too, it's kind of neat because like, if you don't have a lot of space, you can still do a lot in a little grow bag, you know? So, or if it's an icky growing area. You right. Don't fuss with it. You know, another thing I told you, I hate, hate, hate weeding. Well, I brought a box because I was putting stuff in it, but you know what? I have been using cardboard like crazy this year. I have an area, well, <clears throat> We had we had St. Bernard Nuki crosses and I lived too close to the road and and it, needless to say I didn't need their big tail anymore. And so my chickens this year decided they wanted to eat my garden before I even started. Then my they start chewing up my garlic and digging it up and even in my straw bales and I hadn't done anything yet. And so um, we were talking and we said, why don't we use the dog kennel fence around the garden? So I have a lovely Garden fence. No, <laughs> I, I miss my dogs though. But anyway, um, I have an area that I, I, think, was, I think I expanded your garden more than, <laughs> yeah, you did expand my garden a lot, but that's okay. I have a mind. I'll, I'll find a use. But, so I took cardboard and then I got compost and spread it out, and it really, this kills a lot of weeds. And, but I still had my kitty, kitty bean because we're really bad at the pasture. Um, we had to we hired a guy to come and spray it. Killed some of my trees and a few plants, but not too bad. Not as bad as I thought. But this is so good. What what problem with your chickens might be using the blood meal? They love it. No. That area that was before I even used it. Oh. That was before I even used it. I yeah. put blood blood meal on my irises. And, oh. And the chickens at Destroyed the iris. Well, they did. They got the roots so bad. Yeah. Oh, I get so angry when chickens sometimes. <laughs> but I love their names. So <laughs> that rooster 5:30 every morning gets kind of old. <laughs> anyway, but we need to get out of here today. And so, um, if we don't have any more person comments or questions, um, we'll see you next month. Yeah. Next month, Marlis is going to talk about seed saving. Yeah. And uh, she is the club expert on that. So we can learn a lot. If you haven't signed in, please do that. If you want some seeds, let us know. And um, otherwise, we will see you next month. Same time, same place. <laughs>